The Great Exhibition ran from the 1st of May to the 15th of October 1851. To accompany our VR simulation of the exhibition, to be released free of charge in September 2024, we have created a five-part video series about the Great Exhibition of the Works of Industry of All Nations. Once the Great Exhibition closed its doors for the final time, what happened next? Joseph Paxton wanted his creation to remain in Hyde Park as a winter garden. But permission to erect the building had only been granted if the building was temporary, and after several months of lying virtually empty, it was dismantled, and Hyde Park was returned to its original state. The building components were sold, moved to Sydenham, and rebuilt in a modified and much enlarged form, where it remained until destroyed by fire in 1936. But the real legacy of the Great Exhibition came from the careful use of the £186,000 profit. The Royal Commission for the Exhibition of 1851 was granted a supplemental charter to use this profit to increase the means of industrial education and extend the influence of science and art upon productive industry. Plots of land totaling 87 acres were purchased to the southwest of the exhibition site. This land, which became known as Albertopolis, ultimately became the site of various museums, Imperial College, the Royal College of Art, the Royal College of Music and the Royal Albert Hall. It had been Prince Albert's intention that the Royal Commission should award scholarships. The alumni of this scheme include 13 Nobel laureates. Perhaps two of the most famous names are the first, Ernest Rutherford, and most recent, Peter Higgs. The investment of funds means the assets of the 1851 Commission have grown to over £110 million, allowing the granting of over £3 million per year to students and researchers. It is this, surely, which is the greatest legacy of the Great Exhibition, fulfilling Prince Albert's dream, that the different industrial pursuits of mankind, arts and sciences, should not again relapse into a state of comparative isolation from each other, in which their progress is necessarily retarded, and the different nations would remain in that immediate relation of mutual assistance by which these pursuits are incalculably advanced.